we are going to do a lab about touch sensing. The objective of this lab is going to use the touch sensing key that is on the board right here, so located uh, right there. And uh, basically what we're going to do is configure our TSC, so the touch sensing controller of the SM32 U0, and also configure and import or like use the ST touch sensing library, so TSL. We'll then add some application code in order to turn on a LED when there is a touch. Let's look at the touch sensing part of the schematics. So the key itself, so this is what I was showing you, so the touchpad that I was showing you previously on the board is connected to the signal T key. So T key is actually PD11 on the SM32 U0. And then we have the sensing cap for this key. So the sensing cap is connected to this capacitance of 39 nanofarad and is connected to this signal Tiki underscore CS and Tiki underscore CS is connected to PD10 on the SM32 U0. Coming back to the key, as you can see, there is a serial resistance of 10K and this is you know, our recommendation. So this is for ESD protection. We also have a shield that is designed around you know, the touchpad so of the key. So to enable or to have a shield, you need to have the shield signal connected through a 1K resistance. So this shield signal is connected to PB12 on the SM32 U0. And then same as you know before, so you need also like a sampling cap and the sampling cap is connected here. So shield underscore CS signal connected to a capacitance of 390 nanofarad. So this is, you know, something that, uh, that works for this type of design, you know, that we have on the discovery kit. If you have more questions or if you want to know more about designing, you know, like touch sensing application on the STM32, I recommend that you uh, look at, you know, the application notes uh, 4312, so 4312, and this will provide, you know, some guidelines to design your touch sensing application with surface uh, sensor, like we have on this disk kit. So the shield is using two IOs on the SM32 U0, so PB12 and PB13. So if you want to know more about the shield, so this is actually a driven shield, what we're using in this uh, design. And if you want to know more, yeah, please go to the application note I was referring before, the application note AN4312. But to give you a little summary about the advantage of using a driven shield. So first, this will protect the touch electrode from noise source. This will also help to remove the touch sensitivity from the cable and the tracks between the electrode and the STM32. This will also increase the system stability and performance when there is a moving metal part close to the electrode. Okay, so I put here like a table to recap, you know, about the different signals that we have for touch sensing with the key itself and the shield. So two IOs for the key and two IOs for the shield. So let's look at the key first. The key itself is connected to PD11, which is uh, alternate function for TSC, so touch uh, sensing controller, group six, IO2. And then the T key underscore CS, so which is PD10, is an alternate function for TSC, group six, IO1. So you see, same group for the key. And then we have another group, for the shield. So we use the group one, as you can see on this one. So IU1 and IU2. And this is using PB12 and PB13 for the shield. And now that we understand a little bit better about the hardware of the touch sensing parts, we can start the project. So please, under stm 32 cubeid create a new project. Okay, so we're going to create a new project. So you know, huh? file, new, and then STM32 project. 
Okay, same as before. In the MCU MPU selector, please, in the commercial part number, select the STM32U0833 MCT6. Then select the part number right here, and then you can click next. Okay, so in the commercial, so we are in the MCU MPU selector, the commercial part number, select the STM32U083MCT6 and then select right here and now we can click next. We're going to give a name to the project so for example touch sensing and then click finish yes after a couple of seconds, your IOC file is loaded. So if it takes a little bit more time, please pause the video. Okay, so first we're going to configure our TSC IP or peripheral. So this is the touch sensing controller. So you will find it in the pinout and configuration tab. So this is open by default. Then we will expand the system core click on TSC and then we'll start with the TSC mode. So in the mode, so this is the first configuration we'll do, the mode for the TSC, we will configure the different groups that we're using. So remember in the table uh, I was presenting before, we're using group one for the shield. So we need to configure the shield itself and then its sampling capacitance where it's connected. So group one IO1 and group one IO2. And then same thing for the key itself. So the key itself is connected to the group six IO2 and the sampling cap connected to group six IO1 of group six. We will start by configuring the key, so the group six, and then we will configure the shield, so the group one. Okay, so we said system core, so we're in the pinout configuration time, system core, we expand. TSC located right here, click on it. This will open the mode, so the different groups of the TSC and uh, different groups and different IOs inside the groups. First, we start by the key, so the touch key itself, which is connected to the group six, we said. So we expand group six, the sampling cap is connected to group six IO1. And the key, so the touch key, is connected to the group six IO2. So click right here. Now we can take care of the shield. So we said the shield was connected to the group one. So expand the group one. And first we're going to uh, select which IO of this group is connected to the sampling cap. And remember uh, that from the schematics and from the table, we discovered that it's connected to the group one IO2. So G1 underscore IO2. Now the shield itself is connected to the G1 underscore IO1, so group one IO1. Okay, and then we are done with this part of configuration right here. To validate your configuration, you should have the following in C configuration right here. You should have PD10 and PD11 that are configured as TSC uh, group six, IO1 and IO2. And then right here, you should have PB12 and PB13. So PB12 is the TSC group one IO1. And PB13 is the TSC group one IO2. Okay, second step is going to be to enable the interrupts for the TSC. So NVIC and then just enable the interrupt. To enable the interrupt, just need to click on the NVIC tab right there, NVIC settings and enable the interrupt for the touch sense controller. For the parameter settings, so you're going to go and click on parameter settings, we'll use the following settings. 
So this is, you know, what uh, we found that has been working very well, you know, for this particular case in uh, the discovery kit. So we're going to use the following. The charge transfer high pulse length will be six cycles. And same for the charge transfer low pulse length. So we'll set it also to six cycles. We will keep the spread spectrum to disable. For the pulse generator prescaler, we will choose the synchronous clock with a divider of four. We will increase the maximum count value to the maximum load, which is 16,383 charges transfer cycles. The IO default mode will be kept as output push pull low. The acquisition mode will be normal and then we'll disable the maximum count interrupt. We won't need it. So go to parameter settings. We'll increase the charge transfer high pulse length to six cycles. And we'll do the same for the charge transfer low pulse length to six cycles also. So the spread spectrum, we keep it disabled. For the pulse generator prescaler, we'll keep it by default, which is a synchronous mode with a divider by four. We will increase this to the maximum, so 16,383 charge transfer cycles. So this is for the maximum count value. The IO, so default state, we said we keep it low. Uh, acquisition mode will be kept to normal and we'll keep the maximum count interrupt to disable. And now we are done with the TSC peripheral configuration. We can now configure the touch sensing library, so the TSL library, uh, touch sensing, as you can see right there, that will be located in the middleware and software pack. So let's do this. So what we'll do, we'll uh, expand the middleware and software packs, select touch sensing, enable it. So once you know you enable the library, there will be a pop-up window telling you that, you know, uh, you need basically uh, to know that first this solution has some limitation because you can do uh, surface capacitance support only. And this is limited proximity range. So we are nowhere, you know, to be do some uh, multiple, I don't know, centimeters. We're just limited to very small uh, procs. Then, of course, we have a wiki page, so we recommend you to look at this wiki page, so you can click on the link there, that will bring you to the wiki page where we give a lot of information about how to get the best performance and uh, to have all the design guides that is provided to you, all the tips that we have learned, you know, after years and years of uh, doing this. So we encourage you, you know, to look at that and also to look at all the application notes that we uh, wrote and we published about the touch sensing. So once, you know, you know about uh, all these uh, warnings, so be careful. So it's, yeah, the touch is a difficult uh, design. So uh, you need to be aware of that. And then, so once you approve, you click OK. Then we're going to click on the sensors selection tab right here and select the touch key sensors. So we will define the total touch keys right here. So to be one in this case, and where is it connected? So the IO underscore touch key one will be connected to a group six underscore IO two. So this will be populated automatically by the tool. And this thanks to the previous configuration that we did of the TSC peripheral. All right, so let's expand a little bit. Uh, look for the middleware and software packs. Expand it. Look for the touch sensing so right here. And now we're going to enable it. And this is the warning. Remember a window that I was telling you about. So you know what you are getting into now. So once you click OK, And this is, so first we're going to go to the sensor uh, selection tab right here. And for the touch key sensors, so we have one key. So press one. 
and this will be populated by the group 6 IO2 that has been configured previously, remember, in the TSC uh, peripheral. For the configuration parameters, you will click on config parameters tab right here. And then, so we'll use this configuration right here that is perfect, you know, for our touch key on the discovery kit. So we won't use the proximity. So the prox will be set to zero. We will change the acquisition limits. So we'll change the minimum acquisition to five cycles right here. And then for the calibration, we'll use a calibration samples of four. And this is probably the most important settings that we will do right here. So this is the thresholds, the thresholds to detect a touch. So this is very, very important. So we're going to de uh, define the T key detect in threshold and the T key, uh, the touch key, so detect out threshold. So this is very important. So we sell it, you know, to the following. So this is, you know, something that has been tested uh, with different people and uh, different boards, different setups. And this looks like it's, you know, behaving uh, with a very good uh, results. So let's select for the Tiki detect in threshold 255 counts. And for the Tiki detect out thresholds, 200. Now for the calibration thresholds, we will select 90. In the config parameters tab, so click on it right here, config parameters. So first we will disable the proximity. We won't use it in this lab. So put zero right here. Then for the acquisition limits, we'll set the acquisition minimum acquisition to five cycles. So put five instead of 10. Now for the calibration, we'll keep it as it is. So calib samples four, that's perfectly fine. And now we can uh, select the thresholds. So the first one is the prox. So we won't use it. There is no need to change it. So here are the parameters to change here, the thresholds to change. First, the detect in threshold. We'll change it to 255. And then the detect out threshold we will change it to 200. Now for the calibration threshold, change it to 90. So those settings have been uh, pretty uh, good, you know, like uh, on this board. So let's try that. So we will use also two LEDs, so the blue LED and the red LED. So we're going to configure the IOs that are connected, you know, to these LEDs. So PF5 and PB2 as output push-pull. So we'll use, you know, this to indicate different states of the library, the touch sensing library, and also to indicate if there is a touch or not. Okay, so let's configure our IOs PF5 first. Right here, we configure it as a GPIO output. So that will be one IO connected to the LED. And the second one, we say PB2. So PB2 is right here. Same thing, we'll configure it as GPIO output. Perfect. Finally, we will configure the clock tree. So go to the clock configuration tab and we'll run also at 48 megahertz. So from the MSI, so select MSI 48 and then for the system clock max, select MSI source. So this will configure the whole microcontroller STM32 U0 to 48 megahertz. So clock configuration tab, click here. Now select 48 megahertz and we'll select MSI as the system clock max. And now, so we have all our clocks configured at 48 megahertz for the sm 2 u 0 We can now generate the code, so select your project and you can just generate the code from here. Yes. This will also change the perspective and now we can add some user code to have an application 
So we'll define, you know, the application and then we will add the missing code. We will start by adding code in a file called tsl underscore user.c. So you'll find this file right here. So in your project, you know, like Explorer, you will expand touch sensing uh, folder, then go to app and you will find, you know, your tsl underscore user.c file right here. So double click on it and then we'll add. So in this user code begin for the acquisition. So end of acquisition will add basically a change uh, for the Delta. So because we have so much resolution in this board. So the, basically the, the Delta is the difference between the reference count. So when there is no touch and the touch, you know, when there is a touch. So the count when there is a touch. So the Delta is so big that we have actually to divide by three, you know, the Delta in order to uh, get, you know, like uh, the proper uh, settings, you know, for the thresholds to work. So this is a good thing, actually. So it's very good design. And we have a big difference between a no touch and a touch. And so we have so much data, so much counts that we actually need to divide by three the counts to actually, uh, you know, like uh, get the thresholds to work properly. So that's why we are doing, you know, this line of code right here. So the code to be added can be found in the text file called code to add workshop.txt. And so if you go to the section for the touch sensing lab, uh, you will find uh, the code to be added. So uh, the first line of code to be added, we're going to add in the tsl underscore user.c and we will add this line of code in order to divide the delta by three First line, so copy this part. Okay, so in touch sensing, expand app and the file that we're interested in, in tsl underscore user.c. So open this file. Okay, and now we're going to scroll down and look for, uh, so there is a place for acquisition. So that will be right here. So user code begin end of acquisition. And we add the line of code that we copied. So this is to divide, you know, the delta by three. So the code that we added is actually inside the function called TSL underscore user underscore exec. And just to give you an idea, that's about like line uh, 200. 26, it should be around this. Next, we're going to open main.c. So you can find main.c inside so your project, core, source, and then you find it right there. Double click on main.c. And we're going to add uh, first an include. So an include for the touch sensing library. So underscore uh, include tsl.h. So that will be added. So for example, you can add it in the includes, you know, like a code section. Second, uh, we're going to add the process sensor uh, function that will be added at the end of the file. Uh, when we start in the main function, we're going to use, you know, this declaration right there for the TSL status. So that's the status of the touch sensing library that will be used. Uh, for the user code begin to section, that's a good part where we can add the tsl underscore user underscore init so that will initialize our library and uh, this is it so let's start with this first okay now we're going to go to core and then source main.c we click on it first we'll add you know the tsl.h right here so that's a good place right here to be added then we continue scroll down so in this pv section right here this is where we're going to add the declaration you know for this process underscore sensor uh, function that will be used at the end of the file later on so we'll add the function so first add this in this section okay so now you can scroll down go to the main function 
and this user code begin one section, we're going to add a variable for the TSL status. So this is uh, called, uh, we'll call it TSL underscore status. Okay. And this is the return of the library that we'll use. Next. So you can scroll down. So after the touch and sing init right there, uh, so this is, you know, where so the TSC is being initialized as we said it uh, previously. This is where the touch sensing library in it is going to be done. Now we need to launch the TSL underscore user underscore in it. So this is the perfect place to call it right there. So in the user uh, code begin to section right there. Now in the while loop of main.c. So in the main function, we're going to add uh, these signs of code here. So that's something that will execute uh, constantly, you know, in the while loop or infinitely. And uh, so we'll get the status of the TSL underscore user underscore exec. So that's the function that will execute. Mm. And depending on the status, you know, we will process, you know, the sensors. So we'll call, you know, the process underscore sensors. Uh, with the parameter of the TSL underscore status. We'll put a little delay here of 10 milliseconds. So this is for efficiency of the debounce, you know, to prevent some false detection. So you can add, you know, this uh, 10 milliseconds delay. That's perfectly fine. So let's add this code. Now, in the while loop, right there. So those are the lines of code we're going to be added. So you can find that in your text file if you don't want to type it right there. So those are the lines that are needed right there in the while loop of your main.c and main function. And this is the last part of the code to be added for this lab. So I know there was a lot of code to be added, but you know, it's a complex uh, peripheral, complex uh, middleware, complex lab. So this is, you know, the minimum code actually that uh, uh, to, to run, you know, the application. So last part is to add this function. Remember that we defined, uh, we declared earlier. So now we're going to add the function itself, which is the process underscore sensors. So like it says, so this is where we're going to process, you know, the sensor. Uh, so we have uh, first, uh, let's say a structure. So my tick is and the first element zero. So one of the parameters of this uh, structure is going to be the P uh, data and then uh, state ID. So the state ID can have a different uh, state like it's uh, indicating. One of the states is TSL underscore state ID underscore detect. So this is when we detect a touch. So that's where you, when you touch your key, on your uh, board, it will change, you know, like uh, the state. And when it's detect, we're going to turn on, you know, like one of the LED, so the blue LED. So this is PA5, right? And there is no touch, we just switch off, you know, the LED. And now there is one more LED. So this is the red LED that will indicate like the state of the library, let's say, of um, especially for the ECS. So the ECS environmental change system. So this is a part of the library. And when there is a touch, you will see that, you know, the, uh, we're going to turn off the red LED. So that's where basically there will be a touch. So where the ECS is going to be off. And when the ECS is on, basically we're going to toggle the LED. And you will find that when, you know, the, uh, the key is idle, basically the ECS is running in the background. So the ECS is going to basically adapt according, you know, to the change in the temperature, the voltage and other, you know, humidity, for example, parameters, it's going to constantly, you know, run in the background. So this is why when there is no touch, you will see the red LED that will be blinking. And then when there's a touch, it will stop. So we won't run, you know, the ECS anymore. So let's add this part of the code. So at the end of the file in main.c, we'll add in the user begin for section. Okay, scroll all the way down. 
look for the user code for big uh, begin for section right here and add so this function the process underscore sensors function where we're going to turn on you know the blue led on or off depending if there's a touch and then when we we will um, basically control you know the red led according to the status of the library especially uh, you know with the ecs so off or on and that's it so we're done with the code to be added we can now build the project so it can take some time so please pause the video you know if you need more time to build it okay the build is done it's beautiful zero errors zero warnings this is absolutely great. And now we are ready to flash you know, the code and run the code. A little bit of background. So this is where your touch sensing key is located, right there. Okay. We're going to power from the USB right there. This USB cable that is connected to the ST-Link. So this is the connector one. All right, and the jumper will be selected to, you know, be powered from the ST-Link. So this is a good time now. If the board is not connected, connected it. Et voilà, it's enumerated. And now you can enter debug. So you will enter the debug session with this icon. And then you click OK, switch, and then run the code. Okay, so make sure your project is selected. And now we're going to enter, you know, the debug session. So right there, this little icon right here. Okay. This will enter the debug session. The code is up to date. And now, we can connect to the debugger, switch, download is verified at this point. We can run the code soon and execute the code. So with this icon right there. And this is how the lab operates. So this will uh, be indicated by the status of the LEDs, the red and the blue LED. The red LED toggles when the ECS is on. The ECS is on when there is no touch. And that means when all the sensors are in the release state. The red LED will be off when the ECS is off. And this is actually when a touch is detected. So the blue LED indicates, so that will be on when the touch is detected and the blue LED will be off when no touch is detected. So I will let you play with it. So try to approach your finger, you know, to the TS1 pad on your discovery kit and see how the LEDs are going to operate. So you should see the red LED by default that will be toggling when there is absolutely no touch. So this is when you know the ECS is uh, running. And then when you approach your finger, so you're going to touch. When you make contact, you will see the blue LED that is on. Then when you remove your finger, you will see the blue LED that turns off and then you have also the red LED that starts blinking again. And then when there is a touch, by the way, the red LED stops also. So the ECS is off in this case. So it's red LED blinking means also it's really state. So there is, you know, the default state of the key, there is no touch. And then when you touch, the blue LED is going to be turned on. All right. This concludes our lab. We can now terminate the debug. So this is the icon right there. 
And then we can uh, basically clean the project, so to remove all the objects that we built. And then we can close the project. Terminate. And right click on your project. Select clean project. This will remove, you know, like all the different objects that we built. And now we can close the project. That's it. Okay, thank you.